Good morning. This is Dancing Without a Net Theater. I shall be doing my usual routine of trying to string together words that make sense. Uh, I don't know how you felt about the 20-minute epic story of me almost bleeding to death, but when you almost bleed to death, you kind of, you have to tell it right, you know. And I, I'm like, oh, the cop went up to the passenger window. Oh, my audience is smart enough to figure out that the cop went up to the driver's side window. You know, you make little mistakes like that when you're you're not rehearsed. And uh, you're thinking about how to construct it, you know. I'll tell you what, storytelling is an art, and not everybody is Mark Twain. But I, I thought about doing stuff like that before. Like, um, why, I got these weird stories, like of almost drowning and being washed off in the wilderness in my underwear and uh, s other stories. It's like, why don't I just, like, make shorter stories than 20 minutes? I mean, that was a long story, but that, you know, was a complete story, more or less. Uh, but why don't I make just like these little stories like I got my priapism story on another account where which is a hilarious story and um, all people would comment on is the poor sound quality I'm like that's a great freaking story I'm sorry this you, know, you can't get past the sound quality involved but uh, I had to take a quick quick peek at the the light to uh, let myself know the microphone was on but Anyways, going outside did me actually did me some good because I went through um, most of the apartments that were sent to me, and I found one I really liked, and uh, I put in an email inqu inquiry, 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 and um, they sent me back something, and I have a number to call today. So, you know. I'm, I can't, ex you know, it's nice of this guy to help me out, like, scouting around for apartments and stuff, but I can't ask him to, you know, I'm 52 years old, I can't ask him to be making phone calls for me because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, you know. I have i don't move. I mean, I've stayed here in this place, putting up with all kind of bullshit just because I don't like moving. So, I stayed 15 years at one place. I stayed... One year at a place where I didn't get get along with the roommate. Another place I stayed less than a year at a place because I didn't get along with the roommate. But when I'm by myself, I tend to stay wherever it is I'm at. You know, I think that comes from like um, growing up with a, with a hard childhood. It's like you kind of just accept things. You're kind of like, well, this is my lot. You know, this is the way things are. So, um... Yeah, so just call them up, ask them what they have available. That's the first thing. Uh, the name of the apartment buildings did not influence my decision, but it is a cool name, uh, Stonehenge Apartments. So um, it's also in Maslin. It's, you know, fair enough distance away, and it doesn't matter. Uh, where, like I said, I don't care. If, I'd like, I was going to move to North Canton, but I, I don't care. I just want, want to move. But, um, there's like a big woods behind there. And I, here's the thing. No, the sunlight's coming. <laughs> I did, I got to fix that. Where's my box? <laughs> Where does that box go? The box is not here. Oh, that was my stomach, man. My stomach's not happy this morning. Now, where was I? This is going to be a short video. I got to I gotta fix that. Or maybe the uh, passage of the sun. You know, I only have to hold this up here for a while. But uh, anyways, the thing there's a few things that grab my attention about it. Like a lot of places, they have coin-operated laundry. Well, let me tell you something. If you want to waste like $20 every week, coin-operated laundries are the way to go. You know, so this actually has laundry hookup where I can buy a washer and a dryer. And, uh, you know, have a laundry facility inside my apartment. Okay, score one. 
Uh, no hallway. My own private entrance. Score two. Uh, nobody. Here's the big one. Nobody living above or below me. It's a ranch style apartment complex. I like sold, you know, um, I would be responsible. They pay the gas bill. Also big. This is Northern Ohio. You seen me yesterday. It's cold out here. Even in April, you need gas bills can be a problem. So uh, they pay the gas bill. They play a fat, uh, you you pay a flat fee for uh, water, trash, and sewer. And um, that's, that's, I don't know what the flat fee is, but it, it just didn't say. Why it didn't say, I don't know. Um, and you're, you're responsible for the electric. And uh, it has a road that goes by it that, you know, is I don't know if it's a busy road. I don't know that part of Maslin. So I don't know if that's a busy road or not. I looked on the map and it was, looks like it could be a busy road, but um, there's too many pluses. That would be like the only minus to the place. So I'm like, yeah, I want to live there. And uh, the it, they sent me back a confusing email because they have like um, a, apartment complexes in Akron. I mean, they're part of like a big chain, which is, is actually a good thing because uh, they're probably professionals. You know, they're not like this jerk jerkwad and just going around buying properties and uh, fixing them up and renting them out randomly. You know, his the company, uh, Gerald Miller's company is actually, I forget the town that it's in, but um, it's his dad's company and it's a construction company. This is just something he does, like, on the side, just fucking people over, renting to him. So, um, his dad was doing it, too, but he's a, you know, he's, his silver spoon up the butt comes from construction money, uh, which explains why they built the wheelchair ramp out there themselves, and according to this guy, they built it themselves and then charged for it like professionals did it. So all they paid for was um, the wood. You know, the labor wasn't shit to them. But they charged this guy, I forget how much he said, to uh, put his wheelchair ramp out here. Nice guys. Nice human beings. So anyways, it's a huge chain. And the email that I got sent back, um, it just didn't really tell me nothing. It just has a number in... Um, you know, so I have to call and check and see if they have anything available. And I'm sure they don't. I just don't. I just got a bad feeling about it. I like it too much. It's too perfect. You know, so but I put a call in. Uh, they're still moving people in with the COVID situation. They just have a different protocol they've adopted for moving people in where you, uh, your application form is filled out over the Internet. And they had some other things. You know, the office is closed. They don't want nobody in the office. And, uh, um, you know, it's just it just popped out at me. It's like, yeah, that is what I'm looking for. You know, there's like a woods back there. There's even a stream local to it, uh, Sippo Creek. And uh, it's like, yeah, this is, this is kind of what I'm looking for. If I want quiet, I can just go walk off in the woods and sit in the woods. It's probably pretty quiet. You know, um, dog, by eight o'clock in the morning, that's a good time to hear a dog barking right above you. So yeah, that was a big selling point. Nobody living above me, nobody living below me, ranch style. Um, it's built for a car apartment complex, so I'm imagining the walls between the apartments are pretty soundproof. Can I move this shit? No. My arm is really sore from holding the... It's just sore in general. I don't know. Uh, so that, there's there's other options in there and stuff, and um, I kind of have to make up my mind how I'm going to handle the landlord, which I haven't... You know, I told him I'd get back to him soon. You know, I was... Which is kind of vague. You know, 
I just don't want him to start any eviction process on me, which he's not likely to do, you know. I'm not sure how uh, they would feel about evicting people in a world pandemic who are in the highest demographic for fatality, or even, you know. I, I, I could do some research and read up on it. I did do some research and read up on, uh, but that was, you know, things were changing with this all the time. China's had its second outbreak, so, you know, which leads me to believe that this quarantine stuff, that they should just keep this going. Um, yeah, uh, my brother was telling me stuff because he's been out and about, and he's like, uh, he went to uh, Lowe's, which is, I don't know if that's a, a national hardware store or not, but that's a hard, I think it is. But anyways, they, they like change their hours to where they have limited hours that they're open. And um, I talked to my, it was confusing because I talked to my niece and she was like, they wouldn't let her in the in the building. They actually had people standing outside, like turning people away. Because uh, her theory was they fucked up on uh, safety protocols and pissed somebody off, but who knows. And uh, then my brother said he went to Lowe's and I said, wait a minute. Uh, my niece said that Lowe's was closed, and he goes, "No, they're just closed. They just limited their hours. So you know they should just keep this up. If there's gonna, they fucked up in China, and they, you know, eased up on the rains, and they got a second outbreak going in China right now. So, and um, I don't know if any if any of y'all know this. You, you probably all know this already. It's been all over the news, but this." whole world pandemic thing is a result of espionage like uh, China was uh, stealing secrets they were paying a professor guy 1.3 million dollars that worked in a biology lab and there was some vials smuggled from the United States to China and they made some other arrests involving a Chinese national that was uh, uh, that got into the college by a uh, falsifying information it's a whole big thing i will put a link to uh, the department of justice report just in case anybody hasn't heard of it i'm probably telling you old news anyways but you know mystery solved on that one and there's people that had the theory that china was attacking the world um and it's like that's just the dumbest thing i've ever heard you know use your noodle if you're going to attack the world with like a virus you don't make it real clear that the virus, that ground zero is in your country. So, you know, you, what they did is they were fucking around with espionage type shit. And they uh, had actually a Stephen King, the stand moment, and they had a containment breach. And it, they had somebody get sick. I think they even know who patient zero, zero is. You know, it's like if you're... It, I'm sure that it's not China's plan to be blamed for a world pandemic and to be uh, have uh, like trade embargoes put on them and sanctions against them and uh, all that stuff. You know, it'd just be stupid if they if you, <laughs> they just they they were handling something they didn't understand and they had a containment breach and it's just like right out of the stand, except for a, a less deadly. Uh, uh, virus whether what why they're fucking around with the coronavirus because there's a lot of coronaviruses this particular one's called COVID-19 why they were doing that you know uh, don't know don't know I mean why they would pay 1.3 million dollars to some guy that's working in I think Harvard now one of those one of those Boston or, or Massachusetts uh, highfalutin schools. <sighs> Ranch style, I'm telling you. Um, I'm going to have to put my arm down even if it washes my face. My arm's cramping up. Oh, it's a little better. Yeah, not been getting my proper exercise and whatnot. Been having trouble going to sleep at night. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so I have a place I'm focused on, but that don't mean I'm going to be able to get in there. Now, there's this other place that I was looking at where 
you know, they, they're like, an apartment is coming open on May 14th. That's like my second option. But it's only, the rent's only 580 I'm only paying 425 here. I'm paying peanuts to live in this shithole and listen to dogs bark at 8 o'clock in the morning or whatever sound that animal is making. It's more like um, some sort of pitiful morning. I'm left alone again type sounds. But uh, it's 580, but I'm responsible for the gas. And I'm not, I, I, I wrote down some things about it on a piece of paper over there. And uh, the uh, Stonehenge place, it goes from like 570 to um, 700 something for a, a one bedroom. And um, when I got the uh, email back, you know, it didn't say, it just said um, there was a uh, two bedroom. It, it was a confusing thing they sent back to me because it was like two bedroom, which I don't need to pay for a two bedroom. And um, one bath, and I think it said studio. I mean, I don't know. But then it said 570, you know, just the number $570 beside it. And I'm like, no way in hell there's a studio apartment with two bedrooms for uh, 570. I'm going to point the microphone at the ceiling and see if this... Oh, you're going to stop. Oh. So, it stopped now. I don't know if that's worse than barking or not. It's kind of sadder, so it's kind of worse than barking. Because it kind of makes me feel sad. Because it's like, oh. But it's not nothing you want to hear first time in the morning. The soundtrack to my life is a, is a morning dog. A morning dog in the morning. A sad, pitiful, plaintive dog in the morning. Because I literally just woke up, got a cup of coffee. I want to tell you that, yeah, I, w I was being good and um, got off my butt and, you know, got a phone number to call Creek. And, um, you know, I have to get out of here before I go Looney Tunes or just go mental and, you know, go up the stairs and just beat on the door. Just, I assume no one's up there, so that's why the dog's acting like that. But this is a fucking hellish nightmare that I've been trapped in for like ever. And if you look back, I was looking back at some videos that I had made when I didn't know what the hell I was doing, like from 2013 where I had, like, I don't know, like, nine more teeth and um, more hair, though I, did, I was still, and um, a lot less gray and white in my beard. This is seven years ago. It's just stuff like this is just, like, aged me, you know. I look like a young dude with a hat on, but, I mean, I was really don't give a fuck at that point is like um it's on one port frog one and it there's a video in there called um uh, <laughs> dr house is a pussy because dr house was a popular show back then and he had something wrong with his leg and i'm just talking about like the experience of crps how i acquired it and uh, all that and then um there's a video of me there me with socks on my hands where my one cat is bothering me trying to hog the spotlight. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And I think people objected to that. But I'm very grouchy in it. And I was like, man, I don't give a fuck with it. Uh, uh, what any of you people think. I don't want your goddamn sympathy. You know, I'm just uh, nasty in it. Um, and then there's my priapism story is on there. If you haven't seen that, if you'd be interested. But uh, the sound quality is very bad. But it's told pretty well, you know. I, I've got to turn the fan on. The fan don't block this out, though. It's, it's cold outside. I don't want to go outside and listen. i got a choice to go outside and listen to the road noises or listen to this. Um, yeah. Can you imagine the next person that moves in here 
does does my landlord really think that they're going to put up with Stampy and this in the morning? You know? I mean, um, maybe there's people that enjoy, maybe there's chubby chasers that enjoy the sound of large stamping feet. Um, you know, Iron Man comes to mind. Heavy boots full of lead fills his victims full of dread. My oh my, however that goes. I started to do um, a different song, I think, <laughs> as far as the music. Oh, God, this is not a good way to start my day. I'm looking at the uh, volume, <coughs> losing my voice. Anyways, I'm just going to go, and, uh, because this is going to degenerate into me, like, freaking out over this dog, because it, it, it's like all young dogs, it does not like to be left alone, and, uh, yeah, that's one thing about taking down old videos, is you really don't, it really does show the damage that happened to me over the last seven years and in the video I'm like uh from 2013 I'm like that's right around when Gerald bought the building I'm like the landlord's a good dude I actually say in it you know the landlord's a good dude you know but he's not gonna crank up the heat uh that hot that's why I have sock gloves on my hands and stuff and there's just a couple of oddball videos on it but I can't access the account to pull it down I kind of regret, like, um, deleting some of my old videos that was on another account called Joe Johnson. I should just delete that account altogether. Except for that has, I think I got that plumber cam video. I can put that. That's the only thing that's about. It's about the only thing that's on that account anyway. Um, but yeah, I got moving as far as, like, trying to get out of here. And uh, that's very hard to do when you're dealing with depression. That better not be a fucking voice up there letting that dog do that. Yeah, it is. Maybe she just got in and I'm since I'm in the bedroom, I didn't hear her walk up the steps. I just... Oh, man, what a wet dream. Nobody living above you. Nobody living below you. Yeah, I think I could put up with a little bit of traffic noises. Because you can block traffic noises out with a fan. And, uh... Oh, it's just... It's a beautiful area, too. I mean, um... A lot of trees, a lot of greenery. There's, like, a woods back there. And, like I said, there's a stream within walking distance. Um... It's just a nice nice place but yeah mm. I don't have that much to say besides that I'm irritated now um listening to that hopefully I get my head in a good place to where I'm can you know make my phone call and uh you know not Okay, see, I can hear Stampy now. So Stampy come home and it's walking around. So now the dog's quiet, but I can hear the the brontosaurus uh, impact tremors, which are, she's actually walking in this room over here, but I can hear her up here. It's really loud out here. This is why I am in here. You know, there might be some people that that doesn't bother at all. They don't mind the walls rattling. And the boom, 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 boom. But to me, that's a horrible thing. I'd rather listen to rap music than uh, listen to that. Um, it really gets on my nerves. So, um, yeah, so I, yeah, I was in a good mood. <laughs> the dog fixed that. So, um, I'm gonna go and, uh, yeah, you know, I gotta listen to these. I gotta get up and turn the fan on to block out some of this noise because I can block out the stamping with uh, with the fan. 
and um, already, uh, so you know that I'm trying, and I got a couple of prospects lined up, and uh, yeah, I just have to find the willpower to make the calls, and um, I have to get my mind serene uh, somehow, and I did not go to sleep until way late last night, and I woke up at uh, around um, 7.30 to 8, 8 o'clock this morning. Um, I didn't go to sleep till way late. I, I had this thing where I like, oh, I'm go I was just talking to people on the phone all day yesterday. I know I said I was going to go, but you know me. And um, uh, so I'm like, I can't find the number that I'm supposed to call to talk to my elderly aunt because they've been trying to get people to talk to her just, you know, to keep her connected so she don't drift away because she's like 85 to 90 years old. So I'm like, well, I can do that. You know, that's my best friend's uh, uh, mom. But I've been, like, depressed and stuff, and I'm just kind of, like, avoid doing it. The last conversation with her, I couldn't understand her anyway. I just was, like, playing along, letting her say whatever she wants to say. And I'm like, uh, maybe she was having a bad day or whatever. So I called, and I, I spoke to um, uh, my best friend, and I was like, I, I, don't, I can't find your... Uh, uh, wife's cell number in any of my phones so you know what is it and he goes well now's not a good time to call anyway uh but yeah here's the number but yeah just wait like a half an hour to an hour so like okay i fell asleep like boom right after i got off the phone i had gum in my mouth and i woke up and i was like choking on it and i was like coughing and i was like no i can't talk anyway and i was all disoriented and i get the joy of feeling like crap twice in one day because you're like I always feel like crap when I wake up. Now you can hear the water rushing, which you've heard, probably heard before. Yeah. Fucking around with the mic and being a dick. Um, yeah, she, <laughs> I'm not in a good frame of mind right now, no. Um, I didn't sleep enough. But anyways, I, I like, I got the, this gum that like pieces of it will break off and somehow a piece of it like broke off and I fell asleep with gum in my mouth and it got down the wrong pipe and woke me up and I was just like coughing and sputtering and stuff. I'm like, what the hell time is it? What happened? And it was seven o'clock and two hours had went by just because I was just laying here waiting for a half an hour to an hour to go by because I, they were eating or something like that and you know. So I could call his mom, because uh, she don't can't talk that long anyway, and she's elderly, and you know. But she was sharp as a tack, you know. She not real good at conversation, but um, like she used to be. But she, I mean, verbally, I understood everything she was saying. You know, you got to watch what you say because she takes it too seriously. Like. Uh, I forget what I said, but she, like, overreacted to it. Obviously, I didn't tell her any stories that I think are funny, like, you know, uh, laughing because somebody doesn't cap an IV right and it's blood shooting out of your arm and you're already, like, bleeding to death. And then that intern comes in there and yells at the guy, yells at the uh, nurse that's doing it. And it's like, uh, that was uh, Timken Mercy Hospital, now that I think of it, because it has a different, like, Altman Hospital has a different emergency room set up. You walk into Timken Mercy, and you're like, boom, the desk is there. All the patients waiting is there. It's like a one-room setup, or it was when I walked in there when I was cut. But, you know, that shows you, like, de the level of desensitization. You When they talk about being desensitized to violence by watching it, you can be desensitized to violence when it happens to you or when you're suffering or de desensitized to, like, death type situations into like suffering and watching blood leave your body at a high rate of speed and stuff to where shit is funny you know it's like uh it's they were they i skipped some things of course because the story was already so damn long anyway but they're they kept asking me like you look awful pale when i'm like i'm always pale and they're like like no really you look awful pale do you have any idea how much blood you lost and i'm like uh a lot, 
And they were like, well, that doesn't help us much. And, and we just want to know if we need to give you a blood transfusion or not, you know. And um, they did some tests on me. I, I guess that uh, proved that I didn't need a blood transfusion. So they just hit me with a bunch of plasma. And uh, after they uh, fixed the uh, IV screw up, and uh, B.I. Yeah, actually laughed. I was laughing at all that shit. I thought, I thought all that shit was funny, and I made that joke about, uh, you know, I figured out what they were doing, and I thought it was asinine because they just wouldn't believe me. Maybe, the, you know, I don't know how it works. I, maybe I should know this because I got a cop buddy, but they probably, like, after whatever went down at the bar that we got stopped for in the car, they probably called all the emergency room and was, like, be on the lookout for somebody with any... Uh, violent crime type wounds so that's why they were grilling me but I was like I realized what they were doing it didn't take me long to pick up on it whether you know I didn't have enough blood circulating in my body or not and I was like I did not get in a knife fight with a midget and then the the Roger guy was like <laughs> he thought that was funny at least I got, at least I got one laugh uh, you know if I was in a comedy club I would have been bombing but you know there wasn't that many people that heard me say that so uh, but yeah, it's like, it's, you're being stupid, you know, it's like, what do you think happened? How, did, why would I get cut like, uh, three and a half feet from the ground <laughs> and they fight the guy who's like trying to get my balls or something to me, uh, you know, going for the castration move. I mean, what the fuck do you, how do you, how do you envision a knife fight happening? You know, like how could so it's, it's, it just was stupid. But, um, uh, anyways. I'm going to go for real. For realsies. Do people still say shit like that? I'm going for realsies. <laughs> I don't know where these expressions come from, but everything, your brain saves and keeps everything, man. I have no doubt over that. You know, when they say you only use part of your brain, stuff will pop up in your brain and you won't even know where it's from or where it came from. So, you know, um, yeah. It's one, of the, it's one of the more interesting aspects of being a writer or just a human being. It's like, where the hell did that come from? Uh, but anyways, goodbye, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. And I felt like I owed that guy that morbid, morbid story because he did make me laugh really hard with what he wrote, and then I wanted to reply to him, and then like his comment was gone. So I was like, I owe him a laugh. Maybe he'll think that's funny. Uh, goodbye, and see you tomorrow.